Uh, what you do for high dimensional data uh, is inverted indices. So that's a data structure that's commonly used by search engines. And the basic idea there is um, you have categorical attributes and you want to con uh, and, and you construct a data structure that acts as a lookup tool for what instances contain that attribute in it. So uh, here's an example of categorical data, right? It's a, spam, uh, it's, a, it's a ham spam example. The attributes are whether individual words are absent or present. Uh, so what, a, what an inverted index looks like, it's a list for each attribute. It lists the instances that contain a non-zero value of that attribute. So for example, uh, the word review, the attribute review, occurs in D2 and in D6, right? So you would list two and six that tells you which training instances contain that attribute. So then at testing time, when you get a new example, say account review, you can very quickly compute the set of nearest neighbors, right? So you take account, look up its inverted index, account only occurs in document six, uh, in instance number six, review occurs in instances 2 and 6, so I know that my nearest neighbors must be 2 and 6. So I just need to compute the distance between the, uh, between the testing example and document number 2 and document number 6. So that allows you to very quickly narrow down a set of, um, uh, a set of instances to compare to. The reason this works for... <coughs> uh, the reason this works for text is the attributes are very, very sparse. So most words occur in very, very few documents, in very, very few instances. So when you are merging these lists, you will end up with a set that is much, much smaller than your entire training data set. Uh, if you had a data set that is not sparse, so if you, if you tried real values and you tried to use inverted indices, that would be slower than brute force comparisons. But for sparse data, it works really, really nicely.